Hello, teachers, learners, and parents. Sir Jeff po at your service. Alam nyo ba na meron tayong website na tinatawag na DepEd Commons? Ang DepEd Commons ay binuo upang gawing accessible ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral dito sa ating bansa gamit lamang ang inyong mga smart devices gaya ng cellphones, tablets, at computers. Dito ay maaari nating ma-access ang iba't ibang learning materials mula sa Department of Education. Meron itong mga interactive materials, electronic self-learning modules, at instructional video lessons mula sa DepEd TV na tiyak na makatutulong sa pag-aaral ng mga mag-aaral galing ka man sa public o private school. Walang problema! Dahil welcome ang lahat dito. Para ito sa mga guro, magulang at mga mag-aaral mula sa kinder hanggang grade 12, alternative learning system o ALS, at pati na rin ang special education. At huwag kang mag-alala dahil kahit walang load ay maaari mong ma-access ang mga learning materials. Tama! Libre ito! Ang kailangan mo lamang gawin ay i-on ang iyong data at buksan lamang ang iyong browser at i-type ang commons.deped.gov.ph Alam na ba ng iyong mga kasamahang guro o mag-aral ang tungkol sa DepEd Commons? I-share mo na ang video na ito upang matuto rin sila kung paano gagamitin ang DepEd Commons sa mabilis at napakadaling paraan. Muli! Ito po si Sir Jeff at kita-kits po tayo sa DepEd Commons. Paalam! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Ayan, so good afternoon po sa inyong lahat, especially sa ating mga senior high school learners, mga grade 11 ka man or mga, mga grade 12. If you are taking Earth and Life Science, so swak na swak ang ating tutorial program para sa inyo. So we are also saying good afternoon sa ating mga uh, parents and guardians na, na nakikinood din together with their kids or with their uh, mga anak po nila. Okay, so we are now on uh, week two of our Senior High School Earth and Life Science. So for today, ang target po natin ay uh, madiscuss ang two topics which are classifications of rocks. Yes, we're talking, we'll be talking about rocks today and the different exogenic processes. So ano ba yung mga exogenic processes na yan? Malalaman po natin yan isa-isa mamaya. Alright, so muli, Sa mga loyal uh, viewers po natin ng Itulay, so kilala nyo na po ang inyong tutor for Earth and Life Science. Earth and Life Science is, is Sir Tony or Tutor Tony. Sa ating mga viewers na bagong uh, viewer, bagong viewers pa lang natin, mga bagong tutok pa lang. So I am Sir Tony. I will be guiding you in learning this particular subject. Ayan. So for this session, we're actually using the... Uh, the modules provided by Region 4A Calabar Zone, which is the Pivot module. So for this discussion, we'll be using Module 4 about rocks and Module 5 about exogenic processes. 
Yeah, so Earth and Life Science is a core subject, so pwede siyang i-offer ng first at saka second semester. So ang tanong natin is, are you ready? So nga pala, kamusta kayo dyan? So I hope everyone is doing okay, doing fine. Uh, extended ang ECQ dito sa Metro Manila. So ang, ang mga viewers natin from the rest of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, Mga learners and parents, I hope you are all doing great. Ingat po tayo. Sa mga learners natin na nanonood, uh, live streamer ka man or team replay, kasi pwede mo ito panoorin replay kapag na-miss mo yung schedule. So, i-ready na ang pen and paper, your learning modules. Of course, ang laging sinasabi, presence of mind and presence of our heart. And, syempre, kailangan mag interactive ang ating tutorial. So, hindi naman pwedeng ako lang salita ng salita dito. So, I need uh, everyone to, to participate pag may question kayo or kapag may answer kayo sa mga questions ko, you might type the your answer sa ating comment, comment box or comment section. Indicate nyo na yung full name ninyo. Plus, it would be better kung nasaan kayo, location ninyo, or yung name mismo ng school ninyo. Okay? okay? So, comment and react. And So, our target for... This afternoon is first, uh, at the end of the session, you will be able to classify rocks into igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Okay, so naalala pa ba ang difference ng tatlong major classification ng rocks? Parang I think ang last discussion ng rocks, uh, inaaral pa to grade 10 or sa elementary naman grade 5 science to inaaral. Alright, so we also be... You should be able to explain also how the products of weathering are carried away by erosion and deposited elsewhere. So ito yung mga tatlong exogenic processes natin. Tandaan, weathering, erosion, and deposition. Okay, so tatlong keywords, tandaan natin yan. Alright. Alright, so uh, last week we have discussed, actually, uh, we started discussing how beautiful or how amazing planet Earth is. Uh, we started discussing kung bakit ang planet Earth lang ang mag nakakapag-support ng, ng buhay sa, among the other planets sa solar system, right? So because, because of water, uh, heat, and atmosphere. We also discussed about the different subsystems. Can you recall that? So we have biosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. And uh, sa last portion ng session natin last time, uh, we also discussed about minerals. So recall lang natin, no? Pag sinabi natin minerals, Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. So, sa madaling salita, ang rocks ay binubuo ng mga iba't ibang klaseng minerals. Pwedeng dalawang klase or more than, the, more, than, uh, more than that. Okay? So a rock is a naturally occurring solid aggregate of one or more minerals. Pinagsama-sama. And ang rocks kasi, minsan yan, depende yan sa location. Di ba? Kung anong klaseng rocks uh, meron, pwedeng sa tabing dagat, ibang klase ng rocks. Malapit sa mga volcanic areas natin, sa cities, dito sa Metro Manila, iba, iba naman yung mga tipo ng rocks. So we'll know more about those rocks later on. So the aggregate, uh, aggregate minerals forming the rocks are held together by chemical bonds. So since we're actually talking about rocks here, so ang mga rocks na yan, hindi naman magiging solid yan kung hindi siya chemically bonded yung mga molecules at saka mga atoms yan. Okay, so that is the definition of rock. Alright, so... At first, I decided, papakitaan ko muna kayo ng mga amazing rock formations dito sa Pilipinas, syempre, no? So, although restricted tayo sa pag-travel, no? of course, sa mga areas natin sa Visayas and Mindanao, ayan, so nakaka-amaze lang yung mga uh, rock formations. Hindi naman yan gawa ng tao, di ba? It was made, uh, it was carved or sculpted by nature. So, pwedeng water, pwedeng air, and all the other agents of uh, erosion or weathering. Okay. And ito, isa sa mga gusto ko rin ano, i-share. Ito ay sa, can you guess where is this place? Ayan, yung mga amazing limestone formation natin. So this one is found in Palawan. So kung may mga viewers natin dyan sa Palawan, hello sa inyo. So these are the yeah, limestone. Gawain sa limestone, di ba? So mamaya, malalaman nyo kung anong klaseng type ang limestone. Igneous pa siya, sedimentary or metamorphic. Tsaka bakit nandyan siya sa kalagitnaan ng water formation or nasa gitna siya ng sea or ng ocean. So, man manalaman natin yan later on. Alright. So, for this session, tayo ay, isipin natin yan tayo ay mga petrologists. So, from the word petrology, kasi ang petrology class is the scientific study of rocks. Kung sa college, kung naisipan mong mag-take uh, mag ng science course, so, I encourage you to take Geology, so sub, ano niyan, sub 
field niya, petrology, or you may take also environmental science, di ba? So, mga gustong mag-take dyan ng science courses. Ayan, so petrology is classify rocks. Ano bang naging basihan nila? So, ang pinaka-basis nila is how are they formed and they are basing their classification sa kanilang, syempre, sa mga particular properties nila. Alright? So, that is petrology again, the scientific study of rocks. Ayan. So, shout out muna tayo sa mga viewers natin from all over the Philippines. Kanina, may is from Isabela from Maguindanao. Hello po sa inyo. Ayan. Please include lang po ang inyong mga location from Balayan, Batangas Province. Hello po sa inyo. So, okay pa ba ang taal dyan? Anong klaseng rocks meron dyan sa area ninyo? Alright. So, speaking of that, so we have here the three major classifications of rocks. I hope I know you you can still remember, pero i-reviewin natin or refresh natin yung mga brain cells ninyo kung saan talaga sila nagsimula or saan sila usually nakikita. So we have igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. So let's start with igneous. Ayan. So to give you a clue, ayan, sa diagram ni Sir, of course, you can see a volcano kasi ang igneous ay nanggaling sa salitang ignis which means fire. Ayan. So may element ng fire kasi, init, di ba? Kasi nanggagaling sa kaloob-looban na uh, earth, which is, yun nga, naglumalabas ng init na earth from volcanic eruption. So they are being formed by volcanic activities, nag-harden at nag-crystallize yung magma. O class, naalala pa ba yung difference ng magma sa lava? So kapag yung pag sinabi natin magma, nasa loob pa siya ng interior ng earth. Once it is being uh, released, nasa surface na siya, kumbaga naibuga na siya, nailabas na siya ng mga volcanoes and other means para mailabas yung mga magma, magiging lava na yung tawag sa kanya. Alright? So magma inside, lava, nasa surface na siya ng planet Earth. Okay? And igneous rocks, uh, please take note, they're classified further into their origin, texture, and mineral composition. By the way, you can uh, actually take screenshots para may reference kayo or might as well, you can also download the copy of the PowerPoint presentation sa lahat ng mga E2Li tutors natin via uh, Deped Commons. Type nyo lang yun sa, uh, sa browser ninyo. Tapos explore nyo lang. You can download, you can uh, browse the different subject areas. So speaking of origin, ayan. So meron kanina, di ba, sa loob at sa labas. So we have the terms extrusive tsaka intrusive. So let's begin with extrusive muna. Pag sinabing extrusive, so sa science, no, class, we have different terminologies and yung mga prefix, yung mga simulang salita, will give you the clue. Pwede ba siyang sa loob or sa labas ng galing? So extrusive, ibig sabihin, galing siya sa, uh, napoform siya sa labas. Ayan. So they're known as volcanic rocks. Of course, they are being released by volcanoes nga, di ba? So they are formed above the ground when lava, ayan na, so lava flows or explodes from a volcano. So ang pinaka-common examples natin yan, obsidian, ayan, favorite, favorite ko yung ipa-observe ipa sa mga klasiko dati nung nag, meron pa tayong face-to-face -face, kasi sobrang astig nung uh, igneous rock na yan, mamaya i-discuss natin. And we also have basalt, okay? Kapag sa loob naman siya, nabuo, so, form underground or ang term kasi doon sa mga, mga geologists and petrologists, plutons. Kaya ang tawag ay plutonic rocks. So, they are formed underground from magma. Okay? I'm sure narinig nyo rin itong mga words nito like granite or granite. Diba? Pinanggagawa yan sa mga buildings, mga houses, and gabro. So, these are very essential or very uh, uh, popular na mga igneous rocks. So, again, extrusive and intrusive. Next, ayan. So to summarize, uh, extrusive, sa so nasa surface na siya. And then, intrusive naman ay nafo-form siya underground. So napakadali lang tandaan. Okay? So sa science kasi, uh, ibang mga estudyante, they feel like, ano, parang ang daming kailangan memorize. Pero actually, yun nga, you just have to take patience. You have, you have to have patience, di ba, in memorizing the terms para mas madali mong maaral at maintindihan yung mga terms. Alright? Ganun lang ang technique ni sir. Next, so origin kanina, Texture naman. So, minsan kasi, mabilis na form or compared sa isang klase, may tinatawag tayo na rapid cooling. So, napoform ang igneous rock based sa bilis or bagal ng kanilang cooling rate. So, lalamig yan, syempre, para mag-harden, di ba? Kapag mabilis ang cooling, so, walang time yung mga minerals, di ba, gawa sila sa minerals, para magmamuo-muo. 
So, pag mabilis yung cooling, as you can see on my presentation, it produces fine grains and small crystals. Kasi nga, pabilis lang yung cooling niya. Compared sa pag slow yung cooling, ayan, so that's exactly the opposite lang naman. Pag mabagal yung cooling, may time yung mga minerals para mamuumu. Okay, mag-form pa ng mas malalaki. Ang tawag doon, uh, coarse grains or large crystals. So typically, these are formed or associated with intrusive rocks. So nasa loob kasi mabagal nga yung pag-cool niya kasi nga mainit. Alright? Compared sa mabilis, kapag na-release na siya, extrusive rocks. So may, may, may factor na ng temperature na nasa labas na siya or nasa surface na siya ng earth, mas mabilis na yung cooling process niya. Alright? So rapid cooling. Ang texture niya, syempre, kapag extrusive, mas medyo fine yung grains and pag hinawakan mo. Kapag intrusive naman, medyo may mga makakapaka mga crystals na mas malalaki compared sa extrusive rocks. Ayan, kanina ako pa may na-mention si obsidian. So nakaka-elib lang kasi. So unlike sa dun sa minention ko kanina na extrusive siya ka-intrusive, obsidian is form above ground. So extrusive siya, no? But it cools very quick na to the point na walang crystal talagang nafo-form. And ang texture niya, para siya talagang glass. Glassy yung ano niya, surface niya, ang texture niya. And dahil doon, kapag hiniwa mo siya, very sharp talaga. At ginamit siya dati ng mga early people para makapag, uh, magawing weapon. Yeah, So that is obsidian. Okay? So in terms of mineral composition naman, Alright. So, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na silica or silicate content. So, kapag mababa ang silicate content ng isang igneous rock, they tend to be, uh, to appear dark in color, just like the one I am showing here that is peridotite. And kapag marami naman siyang uh, silica content, so pag sinamit yung silicate kasi, silica or silicon, and then may, may a presence ng oxygen. Ayan. Familiar ba kay sa pumice? Ayan, so para siyang panghilod or something. Pero actually, uh, trivia lang, no? pumice is the lightest known rock. So yung pinakamagaan. Pinakamagaan siya kasi kapag kumuha ka ng portion niya, maliit na portion, kapag nilagay mo sa water, magpo-flow. So ganun siya kagaan. Kasi nga, as you can see, marami siyang mga pores. So nagpo-float yan sa water. Pumice is the lightest known rock. Ayan, to include ko rin sa presentation ko, some of the uses of igneous rocks, kasi nga, some students are asking, sir, but kailangan natin pag-aralan yung mga rocks na yan? Iba to lang naman yan. Well, we cannot say that they are just rocks because rocks are very useful, di ba? So, ginagamit sila sa paggawa ng mga buildings, mga different structures, monuments, sculptures, and I've mentioned kanina yung obsidian. Before, ginamit siya ng mga as tools ng ating mga primitive ancestors. And sa mga mahilig mag-foods pa dyan, ayan, Ayan, pangtanggal lang kalyo. <laughs> Pumice is actually being used sa uh, pang-remove ng calyus. So, diba? so, sino nagsabing bato lang yan? So, may gamit yan. Alright? Let's proceed with sedimentary rocks. Alright? So, tanda na, igneous, may element ng heat. So, usually, mag makikita yan sa mga areas na may uh, malapit sa volcano. So, saan naman natin mga usually makita ang mga sedimentary rocks? So, you can see, may mga large crystals din siyan, karamihan. And, Ayan, may tinatawag tayo ng mga sediments. Okay? Sinet sediments are actually mga fragments ng mga sand, shells, or pebbles, mga mamuumuo na ano, mga particles. Yung tawag doon ay sediments. Doon ang galing word na sedimentary rocks. And according to our archaeologists and geologists, sila ay nagbibigay ng information about the past. Why? Because they contain most of the fossil records na natagpuan natin or natagpuan na pagkaaralan ng mga scientists. So, so sino ang isabing walang gamit ang mga rocks? So, kung wala yung mga sedimentary rocks, we will be clueless kung ano nangyari in the past. Di ba? Let's proceed. Uh, so, we have four steps. Paano na form ang sedimentary rocks? So, erosion, deposition, compaction, at saka cementation. So, tandaan na na, E, D, C, C. Erosion, deposition, compaction, and cementation. So, magandang salita, pag sinabi natin erosion or erode, this is a transfer of rocks. Now, basically, nililipat mo yung rocks or mga soil particles or mga particles na from one place to another. Say, for example, nagpunta ka sa bukid, dumikit sa 
sa mga chinelas mo yan or sa sapatos mo, na-transfer mo yung rocks doon sa particular place or namulot ka ng mga rocks, nilagay mo sa isang place, that is actually erosion na. And other agents include also wind, water, or ice. Ayan. Next is deposition. So from the word deposit, kumbaga yung rocks na yun, nilagay mo sa isang lugar. So it happens when the sediments from erosion settle out. So sa tulong pa rin ng mga agents natin, like wind, water, ice, and others. Ayan. So nagsisettle na siya sa isang particular place. So erosion, deposition, next step ay compaction. So paano, bago siya maging rock, syempre kailangan niyang mag-compact or mag-form uh, mag into, mag-harden pa siya, alright, by layers. So ang sediments na build up yan over time, it will take thousands or hundreds of years. And then in squeeze yan together kasi may pressure, di ba? Ayan. So from this, you can see the diagram, yung mga particles nyo, medyo buhag-hag pa. And eventually, as time goes by, masisiksik siya na masisiksik. Hanggang eventually, it will lead to the final stage, which is cementation. Kung sinabi natin cementation, nagdidikit-dikit na yung mga minerals na nandun sa particular sedimentary rock or nagbubuong sedimentary rock. Yung crystallized minerals, ang natisibing glue para magdikit-dikit yung mga minerals or grains together. So again, we have uh, erosion, deposition, uh, cementation, ah, compaction, and cementation. So yung mga, uh, ano natin, uh, different stages, paano na perform ang sedimentary rocks. And, of course, meron din yung mga sub-classifications ng sedimentary rocks. Depende kung anong klaseng uh, particular substance meron yung rock na yun. Let's begin with, and as you can see, Ang acronym dyan ay COC, plastic, organic, at saka chemical. So madali lang to. So pag sinabi natin plastic, these are the basic sedimentary rocks. Kita mo yung mga minerals. May mga sobrang laki. Meron din mga kailangan mong gumamit ng uh, magnifying glass or kailangan mo lang siyang kapain para maramdaman mo yung mga particulate matter na meron siya. So these are the basic rocks, the plastic rocks. So gawa sila sa eroded na mga particles. Next one is organic. So, ang organic ay medyo kind of special type ng sedimentary rocks kasi ito na nga, sinasabi ni Sir, they, may, uh, they contain the fossils. Ayan, familiar kayo sa coal at saka sa limestone, di ba? Kanina yung sa Palawan, yung limestone formation nila dun. So, they are made from, so organic, made from plants and animals. Yung coal na yan, uh, it's being used as a source of energy and at the same time, nag-provide siya ng clue para sa ating mga scientists para pag-aralan yung nangyari sa Earth during the past millions of years. Ayan. So, they may contain fossils. And finally, we have chemical rocks. Ito mga chemical rocks naman, medyo parang they look like minerals, pero actually, they're a combination of minerals. So, classified na siya as rock. The famous example or the most common example of chemical rock is the halide. So, ang halide kasi, it comes in different colors. Ang so, nakita ko na, parang may transparent siya, may pink, ayan, just like what is shown in your screen, and then may parang blue or yellow, right? So, those are the examples or classifications ng sedimentary rocks. Plastic, organic, at saka chemical. Ayan, so shout out muna tayo ng mabilisan lamang. Baka magtampo ka ating mga viewers. So, I hope you're learning from uh, our session from Palawan, ayan. So, Prince Hardelisa, hello. Binibida kong lugar ninyo. I miss, ito, lagi itong nanonood. Miss Kunanan Escano Ginel, Mau Tolentino from Laguna, Cotabato. Ayan, hello po mga ma'am and sir. Ma'am Maricor, Ella Marie, Gemma from Deped, Cagayan de Oro. Wow. Arlene De Mata Serrano, shout out daw. Hello po sa inyo. Good afternoon. I hope you're all safe. So, yan, ang loyal viewers natin from Sarangani, from Lanao, and Agusan del Norte. Hello po sa inyo. So, you are watching Earth and Life Science, senior high school po tayo. Ayan, Kidapawan. Ayan, laging may nanonood from Kidapawan. Ayan. And, alright. And many others. Bulacan, yan, mga kapitbahay natin. Ginagamit sa mixture ng soil, ng cactus. Yes, pumis, so mga plantito, plantita natin dyan. May halo na kayo yung soil as decoration or may purpose yan para mag-hold ng water. That's from, ayan, thank you for sharing. Ayan, so Sir Rogelio, ayan, friend ko pala to, Sir Rogelio. Pagtaganan ka na, Junior Sir, see you soon. <laughs> ayan, kasama ko yan sa pag, ano, radio station hopping. All right. So, we also have the third and the last metamorphic rocks. Bilisan lang natin ng kaunti. So, metamorphic rock, medyo special din siya. 
As you can see, no, may unique characteristics talaga yung bawat rocks. Special siya kasi ang metamorphic rocks galing siya sa existing na igneous, sedimentary, or existing na metamorphic. So nababago siya dahil sa two factors. We have pressure and temperature. Pero, uh, as you can see here on my presentation, ito ay iba sa diniscuss natin kaya ng intrusive igneous rocks. Diba, sir? Sabi mo, no, galing yun sa magma eh. Different yun kasi intrusive igneous rock, galing talaga sa magma. Pero ang metamorphic rock, because of intense pressure and temperature, nagiging natatransform niya. Kaya nga, metamorphic. From the word metamorphose, uh, uh, nagkakaroon ng transformation, di ba? Nag-iiba yung anyo, nag-iiba yung properties. Let's get to know more about metamorphic rocks. We have two types. Ayan, kapag may layers, ang tawag doon ay foliated metamorphic rocks. They form layers, okay? So you can see, ang best example natin yan is yung knees, tsaka yung muscovite. Alala ko yung muscovite na naman. Sana yun sa napakagandang rocks. Next is non-foliated. So, pag non-foliated, syempre, wala siyang layers. So, random lang yung mga minerals, tsaka mga crystal structures like the quartzite and the shale. But later on, makikita nyo sa mga modules ninyo, may tinatawag tayo na contact at saka regional metamorphism. So, sir, ano yung difference? So, madali lang. So, don't be confused. Okay? So, may clue words. So, sa science kasi gagamit tayo ng mga clue words. So, kapag contact, so contact, nadikit. Diba? Contact tracing, diba? Sabi, ginagamit nga ng mga uh, experts natin ngayon para matrace. Sa, sa petrology, pag sinabi natin contact metamorphism, ang rocks o yung metamorphic rock ay napoform dahil sa heat. Yan yung clue word natin na for contact, heat due to contact with magma. So, nagko-contact, dumidikit sa magma. So, syempre, may ma ma mataas na temperature yun. Yun ang contact metamorphism. Kapag regional naman, so, regional is, parang sinabi yung regional, region, no? So, malawak ang sakop nito. So, ang rocks ay napoform due to the changes in pressure and temperature over a large region of the crust. Okay? So, regional. Okay? Ang clue natin doon ay pressure. Okay? So, contact heat, regional ay pressure. Okay, so mamaya sa evaluation natin, kaya tingnan natin kung maaalala ninyo yan. Ayan, so to summarize everything about metamorphic rocks, ayan, so napakita ko na bila, sorry. Ayan, yung kanina, di ba, sabi ko, ang metamorphic rocks, galing sila sa existing rocks. So granite, nagiging gnis, granite is an igneous rock. Tapos yung sandstone natin, which is a sedimentary rock, nagiging quartzite. So naging metamorphic na siya. And one of the best examples is yung shale, which is a metamorphic rock na siya. But because of heat and pressure, lagi natatransform pa siya into another form or type of rock, which is slate. So ganun kalupit ang <laughs> metamorphic rocks. Kailangan lang ang dalawang ingredients, intense heat at saka pressure. Ayan, familiar po ba kayo sa place na ito? Ayan, so this one is in Rumblon the marble capital of the Philippines, and marble actually is a kind of metamorphic rock. Ayan. So medyo mahal siya. Alam ko mahal ang marble kasi nga uh, limited lang yung ano, pinagkukuhanan niya at saka mahirap i-process ang mga rocks na yan. Alright? Alright. So ito na, evaluation na tayo. So kailangan ko ng ano, ah, mga sasagot sa ating comment section. Ah. So let's just complete the concept map using the words below. Okay. Page 16 to ng inyong uh, module number 4. Ayan. So, meron tayong choices. Sige nga. Parang nawala yung mga nag-comment. <laughs> Dali lang yan. So, here you have on the left side are the choices. Dali lang. So, rocks can be classified and how they were formed. Unahin natin, of course, forms from cooling and solidification of magma. We have igneous. Formed from the compaction and cementation. So, pa-horizontal po tayo. Ha? Sedimentary. And finally, rocks change due to temperature and pressure. Ayan, metamorphic tayo. Alright, so from vertical naman, fill up natin yung sa igneous. Ayan, magma cools slowly, intrusive. Kapag mabilis naman yung pag cool, that is called an extrusive rock. So learners, ayan ha, I'm guiding you to, in answering the, this particular part of your module. For sedimentary rock naman, Kapag ang sediments ay classified by size, they are called clastic rocks. Diba? Yung mga particles niya, very visual or kitang-kita. And then for non-clastic, ayun naman. Very fine lang yung texture niya. Metamorphic, kanina heat, diba? Contact metamorphism. 
And then, for pressure, because of pressure, nagpo-form yung mga metamorphic rocks under regional metamorphism. Ayan. So, you can take a screenshot of that para may guide kayo sa pag-answer ng inyong mga modules. And let's proceed na sa exogenic processes. So, sa science, may tinatawag tayong endogenic at exogenic. So, pag sinabing endo, yun itong mga proseso nangyayari sa loob ng planet Earth. Exogenic naman sa surface na siya ng planet Earth. Ayan. So, ano ba yung mga cause or pwede yung possible cause para mag-breaking rocks into pieces? Yung mga pusong bato na yan ay paano ba yan nagiging, nag-break into pieces? Alright. May idea ba kayo? Before ba, nung kabataan ninyo, nung ginagawa sa rocks? So, I hope hindi kayo namamato, di ba? <laughs> ng mga kalarunan ninyo, binabato nyo lang ang kung ano-anong mga bagay sa paligid. It's one way of breaking rocks. Okay. Let's talk about the way kung paano in a when you weather or paano din break ng rocks ni mother nature ng mga rocks para mag uh, mag mag, mag uh, magpatuloy yung cycle natin sa kalikasan okay so we have here ayan this concepts kaya nga dinefine na natin exogenic process ayan tandaan lang natin yung tatlong process from our objectives kanina matatandaan niyo weathering erosion at saka deposition so rocks are being uh, crushed being weathered Nagi nagiging mas, ano pa siya, maliliit na particle. So, weathering is basically the breaking down of rocks into small particles. And we have two types of weathering. Okay? So, as you can see in the figure, maraming types, maraming klase, or maraming mechanisms para ma-weather yung rocks. We have different agents for that. Ang um, first type ng rock natin ay ang mechanical weathering or physical. So, isa lang yun ha. Sa ibang reference kasi, ang term ay mechanical. But other references, they use the term physical weathering. So, the same lang naman yun. Physical at saka mechanical. So, pag sinabi natin yung mechanical or physical, basically, ang nababago lang ay yung size at shape ng rocks. So, ang nababago. Baga na break lang siya into smaller pieces. Nagkaroon ng crack, nagkaroon ng fracture. Size and shape lang ang nababago. Okay, just like what you can see on our figure. So, water acts here as an agent para ma-break yung rocks natin. Alright, so we have different factors. Bilisan lang natin kasi yung iba dito naman ay very self-explanatory. Kapag may pressure kasi, syempre, it tends to break rocks. Temperature, di ba? Ngayong tag-init na, di ba? Mapapansin natin ang, ra, ang mga sementadong lugar natin sa, sa areas natin ay nag expand or nagkakaroon ng uh, crack. Yung mga crack po na yun ay one factor is because of temperature. Kapag mainit kasi ang temperature or mainit ang paligid, may tendency na mag-expand yung mga solids and rock is a solid. Diba? And ito, ito lang yung dito tayo mag-focus sa tinatawag nating frost wedging. So what is frost wedging? Ayan, yung kanina example din, sa reverse, gusto niya nangyayari, kapag nag nagkaroon ng crack yung rocks, pwede siyang pasukan ng water components, and then eventually kapag nag-freeze yun or na-reach niya a certain temperature na namalamig, it can cause breakage. Ayan, so frost wedging. Ayan, we also have factors like abrasion, babanggaan yung mga rocks, nagko-collide, organic activity naman kapag minsan, di ba, uh, nagkakaroon ng... Uh, yung mga roots ng mga trees, di ba? So, that's a natural way para magkaroon, i-break na yung mga rock components. Of course, tayo mga tao, nagko-contribute tayo sa pag uh, weather ng rocks by means of digging, quarrying, and sometimes, so nakakalungkot, denuding forest, di ba? May mga rocks doon. And, uh, burying animals, mga naguhukay ng mga animals lang natin, like the moles, the rats, rabbits, and squirrels, they also contribute para ma-weather ng ating mga Yeah. So before and after. So from larger components, nagiging mas maliit siya. All right. So let's us let's now discuss or answer this one. Activity four, naman ng inyong module number five, uh, found on page eight and nine. You have to identify the factors of physical weathering shown in its picture. Ayan. So, ni-screenshot ko lang yun sa module, but kung medyo nalalabuan kayo dyan, so we have here a plant growing on a rock. So, nag-cause siya ng cracks, mga fractures. So, the factor for that is, ayan, so hello po sa ating mga viewers from all over the Philippines, from Pangasinan. Ayan. You can answer? 
All right, so we have here, ang nagsabi, organic. Ayan, so plant kasi yung nag-cause ng erosion. How about this one? Ayan, so mga quarrying sites natin. Yun, ay, nabigyan ko ng clue. <laughs> quarrying sites. Ayan, so that is a human activity. And then finally, may mga cute tayong mga animals in nature na naguhukay. So, uh, without knowing na, they are actually participating in the physical weathering of this rocks and other particles na nasa soil. Ayan. So, that is the borrowing of animals. Alright. So, that is physical weathering. Size at saka shape lang yung nagbabago. Alright. Let us now proceed with the second type which is called chemical weathering. So, pag tinabing chemical, ayan. So, not literally, bubuusan mo siya ng chemical. No? So, meron kasi tayo mga existing na chemical reactions. Ayan. May chemical reactions na nangyayari between the rocks and a particular agent. Say, for example, water. Diba? Ayan. So, reaction with water, pwede nga mag-react yan sa oxygen, reaction with acid, and reactions with other organisms. So, for chemical weathering, meron tayong tatlo. Dissolution, hydrolysis, and oxidation. Madali lang yan. Promise. Let's proceed first muna sa dissolution. So, sa dissolution na nangyayari, may mga specific minerals na nadidissolve sa water. Nakapunta naman kayo sa caves. Diba? Malamig sa cave. And as you can see, may mga tumutulong mga water doon. Ayan. So, that is an example of the minerals halite and calcite na presence kapag na-interact, nagkaroon ng chemical reaction with water, nagpo-form siya ng mga stalactites and stalagmites. If you would recall, ang stalactite yung mga nasa taas, tapos eventually after hundreds or thousands of millions of years, <laughs> nakaka-form siya below ng mga stalagmites naman. Okay? So that is a form of actually, actually a form of chemical weathering called, or a factor called dissolution. Next, uh, focus naman tayo sa hydrolysis. So from the word hydro, again, water. So rock-forming minerals like this react with water and form different kinds of clay minerals naman ang focus. So this one is an example of uh, hydrolysis. Chemical weathering in action. So as you can see, ayan, nagkakaroon ng something strange uh, dun sa surface, di ba? So that is an indicator na mayroong chemical reaction na naganap. And then finally, isa sa mga very good indicator ng chemical reaction kapag nagbago ang kulay ng isang particular rock. Okay? So usually, ang nag, uh, ano dun, ang nag react oxygen. Parang kapag gumain tayo ng apple or ng banana, di ba? Kapag naiwanan mo siya, for a long time, nag nagiging brown siya, di ba? So, nag-oxidize kasi. Nag-react siya dun sa, sa components ng prutas. So, we can compare that to rocks as well. So, nag-react yung oxygen sa mga mineral components ng rocks, just like this. Na-oxidize tong rock na to, na originally, grayish siya in color. Ayan, di ba? Ayan. So, parang nangalawang, no? Parang may rust. So, parang may iron content tong rock na to. Na-oxidize, kaya nagbago yung kulay. Alright? So, again, that is... The chemical reaction sa tatlo po yun, dissolution, hydrolysis, and oxidation. Tandaan. Ayan, let's answer this activity about chemical weathering. Ayan, <laughs> first picture, identify nyo lang kung anong klaseng chemical reaction, di ba? Kanina, dissolution, hydrolysis, at saka oxidation. Ayan, stalactite, saka stalagmite. Ayan, so hello po, good afternoon sa ating viewers from Southern Leyte. And other schools division office, our learners, as well as other teachers, tapo ko po teachers na nanonood sa atin. No, that is the solution. Yung stalactite natin, tsaka stalagmites. Ayan. Mahulaan nyo ba yan? <laughs> Ma-identify nyo ba yan? Nag-react si water? Okay. Hydrolysis. So itong mga picture na to is actually found on your modules. And... All right. So I hope nakikita niyo to. You can take a screenshot of this mamaya. Okay. So we are now on the last activity. Fill in the blanks with the correct answer. So 10 items to. Uh, mabilisan lang kasalahan natin. Number one, the process of breaking down rocks either physically or chemically. Ang tawag doon ay weathering. Next, the breakdown of rocks into pieces without any change in its composition. Oh, hindi na bago yung composition or chemical properties. Ang tawag ay physical or mechanical weathering. Number three is the response of oxygen with minerals. Oxidation. So oxygen, oxidation. And thank you, Kurt, for answering. Tamang sagot mo. Next, number four, a mixture of grains, organic matter, water, and gas. That's soil, di ba? 
I will talk about soy later on. Abrasion is a breakdown of rocks caused by the impact and friction. Nagbabanggaan ng mga rocks. Number six, the change in the composition of rocks. Anong tawag? Chemical weathering. Seven is the separation and removal of weathered rocks due to different agents like water, wind, and glacier is called erosion. The movement of sediments, number eight, downslope under the influence of gravity. Okay, ito yung hindi natin na-discuss sa mga slides. No? Ang tawag doon ay mass wasting. Ibig sabihin nun, because of gravity na parang a form of landslide, kumbaga. Alright? Pero ito, mas massive siya. And hindi naman totally yung particular uh, landslide talaga siya. Yung mga particulate matter lang yung na-erode. Alright? Number nine is the process in which the weathered materials carried out by erosion and gravity settle down. O nag-settle na siya doon. Na-deposit na siya doon. Alright? Deposition. And finally, for number ten, blank is a chemical reaction wherein rock-forming minerals react with water and form different kinds of clay minerals. Letter H. Hydrolysis. Alright, so mayroon tayong mga sumagot. Okay, si Kurt, good job. Miss Fe Bautista Arroyo, oxidation, tama po. Peng Sheng, chemical weathering. Yan, so bakit nga ba important ang weathering? Kasi weathering is an important process para magkaroon tayo ng soil. Kung walang weathering or hindi siya nag-exist sa nature, hindi mapoform ang soil. And as we all know, ang soil nagpo-provide ng nourishment sa mga plants. Kapag ang plants, hindi mabubuhay yung mga tao at animals. It's basically a chain of reactions. Alright? So kapag walang soil, hindi mag-exist ang life sa Earth. Ayan. So ganun ka-importante ang weathering. And it happens every day. Okay? Ayan. So for your assignment, ayan. So sa tingin niyo what are the effects of soil erosion? So dito, may nakakita akong picture. So this one is a Philippine setting. Nakakalungkot, no? Dinedenude, kinakat yung mga trees natin sa forest. So, ang tanong ko, ang tanong ko dito sa mga senior high school learners natin, what can you do to protect your community from the hazardous effect of soil erosion? May magagawa ba ang isang senior high school student? Of course, yes. So, send to me your answers via email. Ayan, that's my email, sirtonymaypa.gmail.com. You can contact me rin sa Messenger, sa Facebook, and you can visit my YouTube channel. And to inspire us, diba? So I hope we had a blessed Holy Week last week. Yeah, so let's read uh, para ma-inspire pa tayo to start this week, right? From, from Psalm 18 verse 2, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. So kung ano man ang pinagdadaanan natin ngayon, COVID-19 man yan, or any particular problem, you just pray and let's uh, claim that we will all pass this, okay? So we have the Lord as our rock and our Savior. So once again, thank you very much sa mga nanood, sa mga nakisagot from all over Metro Manila, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. This has been Sir Tony, or Tutor Tony. Ayan po. You can comment then po or email uh, edtech at deped.gov.ph. Ayan, so pwede kayo mag-email dyan. Uh, ang tabay lang po because Shooter Cat is next. So I hope you had a great week ahead. Ayan. So maraming pong salamat. Again, uh, this is Sir Tony. Ingat po tayo palagi. Paalam po sa inyo lahat. Bye-bye. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating itulay free online tutorial session sa English. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating itulay tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippines social media accounts. Paalam!